Now, the first thing you will notice about the studio in general is that there is no wall. <laughs> right? The walls are not finished. You see that right there? There are no ceilings. <laughs> so I had a decision to make with this studio. I had a limited budget and I could either put it toward drywall and redoing the ceiling and making the place look really nice, or I could spend it on camera gear and equipment and improving the audio and the video. No question about it. So right here is where I control the lighting in the studio. And this is interesting. This is about 15 bucks and you can get it on Amazon. Basically, it's an outdoor remote control to turn on landscape lights. That one and two. Right up here, I store my product photography backgrounds. You can see that right there, kind of cool. Over here are things like tools. I do have a tripod, monopod. There's some extra light stands right there. And this amazing product photography kit. Let me show you this. I love this thing. This is the Finhomey Portable Photo Studio. It's 16 inches by 16 inches by 16 inches that you can turn it on. Have a look at this and you can get in and get your product shots. I don't have any affiliation with the maker of this, but I love this thing. And it's wonderful for product photography. It's really small and lightweight. So I'll have a link to it down below. So here's my cheap product table. Right? I bought this thing real cheap and it's, you know, it's like a card table practically, but this right here, these are just vinyl flooring. <laughs> I just stuck, I just got a box of these things at Home Depot, stuck them all together, and from the top down, right, you know, it looks good. You can get some nice shots. And so here I rigged an overhead contraption, I'll call it, to be nice. And what this allows me to do is very quickly and easily get some top down product shots. And I just plug my X-T3 right into the battery grip, just like this. Once the camera's on there, I simply plug in the HDMI cord, just like that. And here's a monitor I have so I can see the overhead rig and I can just turn it on by pressing that. You'll notice in this studio that I will label buttons, the one that turns it on and off so that I don't have to think about it. I can immediately, my eye just boom, goes right to that button. This is a little light that I installed right here. See that? It just hangs down right off this small rig clamp and lights up the table from above. And what's also nice is that this table can be moved backwards and forwards so that if I need to isolate the subject from the background more, I can move the table out just like this, or I can push it in just like that. Or I could take this entire thing down and I've got this black backdrop that I can change out if I wanted to do a headshot or whatever. It's kind of versatile. Not much room in here, but it's definitely versatile. Now this is probably gonna make some of you gasp, but I've bolted this aperture using a small rig thing right here. And then I can aim this exactly where I want and pew, goes right down onto the table. Just perfect lighting exactly where I need it. Probably not the safest thing in the world to keep it kind of gripping on there, but <laughs> yeah, as long as somebody doesn't come barely to open this door, I think we're in good shape. So if I have a product here and I want to have light coming from behind or from the side, I don't want to have to keep setting it up each time. I like fast, fast, fast when I'm trying to make these videos. So I have a small rig extension right here with an aperture light. You see that? I could move it up here, down and all that. So there it is, and it can light the product from the side or even from the back. I could clamp it in the back here and shine it the other direction. It's awesome and it saves a lot of time. So I took this boom mic stand, you see this? And when I'm not using it for audio, I have this small rig clamp right here. Just attach a little video light onto it, just like this. Okay, now what's great is I can have this kind of out of sight. I can just kind of have it beyond and then angle it this way, pull this out, turn this down, sort of top down light, right? Just like that, have a look at that. You see, how cool is that? So if I'm shooting this direction, you don't see the light, but I can get different colors and different angles of it. This works wonderfully. I love this thing. You definitely don't want to put anything hip. You definitely don't want to put anything heavy on it, like an Aperture 120, you know, light, huge heavy light. This thing would come crashing down, but a small light is fine. It works great. Sometimes I got to go old school, so I have a chalkboard right here, which is kind of cool. I love using that. I have another newer C-Stand. You see that with a Godox VL150 light on it. I can wheel this around the studio. These wheels are worth their weight in gold, I'll tell you. It makes it so easy to get this thing around. And then when I need a softbox, I literally just 
I have these little hooks I put in there, down it comes, and then I can just, boom, put it right on there and I'm good to go. And I could obviously move this in and get product shots just with this light, just like that. Get another one of these mounts, right? Then I hook this onto this, which is adjustable. Then I take this like this, just like here. And obviously you're gonna to wanna to put something with some weight on the end of here. You could drape a sandbag over it, boom, done, like that. And I can go right in there just like that. So something important to remember, if you're setting up your own studio and you don't have a lot of space, you have to get creative. In any way that you can, get creative with your shots. Try and just make it work in the best way you can. Be safe, right? <laughs> don't hang stuff that could fall on you but you, you gotta get creative. One of the things you'll notice around the studio a lot are these white storage bins. These are actually from Target. If you look, I have a few here that I just picked up. They're pretty cheap and they can be stacked on top of each other. And then I just use a label maker and label them and I can quickly swap out if I change the setup around. Things like I've got thick gels, thin gels, these are barn door gels for that light up there. Okay, moving into the studio now. Obviously this was Studio B. Here's the main studio as you walk in. One thing I wanna point out right away is that if you turn this way, you'll see this sort of furniture blanket thing. Behind this curtain is a lot of noise. These things kick on. And so before I shoot every video, I have to turn all these things off. Luckily, I've wired it into the Wi-Fi and I can do it right online, which is really nice. So I can do it from my desk. Okay, so this is the area I'm actually the most proud of from a functionality point of view. It's not very pretty to look at, but I really wanted it to be an area where I could just grab something quickly and have it and find it easily. First, right on the wall is this rack right here, which I keep all my batteries, so they're all where I can quickly get to them. This right here, boom, a GoPro. If I need a GoPro <laughs> and I need it quickly, this is where it is. Camera bags are down here, things like that. You know, bulk batteries, these are the Sonys. I use these all the time for everything. Clamps. This is my battery station. I have Velcro underneath that. When I used to shove this battery in, this whole thing, it would just slide. But now I used Velcro underneath it and it's just so handy to be able to uh, stay in place. So now we come to here. These are more of those cheap bins I told you about that I can label. Here you've got your HDMI kind of cables, things like that. And then the rest of this is all audio, right? So if I need, you know, on location lav, boom, there it is lav mics and everything and i mean everything is tied properly i'll you know what this would be a good time to talk about this i use two types of ties kind of the kind you pull and then i just discovered these these are magnetic grab this thing goes like that wrap and then just boom my cables this is my like ikea you know when you get all these wrenches with every, you never know what to do with them, so I just threw them all in one drawer, call it Allen wrenches, and be done with it. This is another idea right here. I always write what type of batteries it takes. So again, if I look, um, let's say I'm out in a shoot, I'm in a rush, I see that it's low on battery power, boom, flip it around. Oh, it needs three double A's, done. And I can just, boom, grab my three double A's. Again, it's all about efficiency and working quickly. Um, Heck pads, this is not yet. This is this is an example of what a drawer looks like before I organize it, <laughs> right? I meant to show you that. Okay, moving over here, we have, again, cord ties. As I said, you know, organization's important to me. Tape, in case I need that to write things on quickly. I can quickly label something. This is where I keep my SD cards. Now I separate them out from micro versus regular. And then within the actual drawer, I have a smaller drawer. This is where I keep them and it's fast. You see, I can quickly grab one. These, these little things don't get lost in the drawer. This is where I keep filters for the camera, ND filters and polarizing filters as well. Everything is labeled, see, pretty much, so I know exactly what to bring, where. Smoke grenades, love those. That's a big mess that needs organization, but uh, this is great because I can attach this onto a rig setup and I get some really solid power with this. Ball head mounts, 
Uh, I grab this a lot for shoots, so it's boom right there. This is one of my most used tools. It's got these tools on it that I'm constantly using when attaching, say, camera equipment to tripods and things like that. I love this thing. And it's so wonderful for stuff where, say you have tripod mounts like these and you need to quickly tighten something. What is the camera and the settings that I use for my videos? This is a Fujifilm X-T3. I have it set to 1 48th shutter speed, f3.2 at ISO 200, and I use the regular kit lens, the 18 to 55 millimeter. It works perfectly. I set it on face eye detect, and that's pretty much it. That, that's the camera I use all the time to do the main shots. And I think that kit lens looks great. This is the teleprompter that I use. It's called a Caddy Buddy. I find that having a teleprompter is invaluable when I'm having to do a lens review or some kind of spec where I have to be exactly correct on every little detail. So I will have the bullet points on the teleprompter. That way I don't miss anything and, you know, say centimeters when it should be millimeters for focus distance, that kind of thing. This is an X-T2 camera, which I have on a newer extension grip, which goes on a C-stand. So you can see it going across. I have a dummy battery in here. So this right here, this is a dummy battery, you know, and that way the camera, I never have to worry about batteries. I just leave it plugged in at all times. I don't leave it on at all times, just plugged in. So when I turn on the camera, if you're standing right where I'm, I'm at, you can see there's, I can see the settings in this little mirror right here. You see that? This Atomos monitor controls camera one, which is the main cam. This Atomos monitor controls the overhead, which I call cam two. That's the, this one right up here. Next, I have a little monitor right here so I can see myself, basically. And I can see myself here as well. I find it easier when I'm talking if I can see if I'm in frame. So that's what that is right there. Let's talk audio now. This is a Rode NTG3 mic, boom mic. It goes through this cord into this zoom right here. And what's so great about this recorder is that you don't have to worry about clipping, audio clipping. You don't have to worry about your levels going you know, making sure that they don't go above zero. I am so paranoid about audio that I have audio being captured in three places. Off the camera, regular audio off the camera. The second place is this boom right here, okay? And then the third place I have it, I have an output from the zoom that goes into this Mac Mini and therefore I can record, test, test, one, two, three, four. So at the same time I'm recording my main audio track on the Zoom F6, I'm recording a backup in the computer itself. Now that we've talked about audio, let's go through the lighting. This is my main light right here. It's an Aperture 120D. I love this light and I've tried to move it as close as I could possibly get it to myself without it obviously being in the frame. Every light that I have, I have set up on remote control. So for example, here's the aperture, boom, I can turn it on, I can control how bright it is right from this. This is an aperture Amaran light, which it's not bad, I don't love it, but it does the job, and it's on the same remote, which is nice. So I have my main aperture key light right here, and I have a fill right here, which helps a lot. Then I have behind me this Godox SL60W. This one right here is sort of a hair light, okay? And I have a remote for that as well, which I can just boom, on it goes. I have Gear Iguana keeping his eye on things, but still, you know, it, it probably could be a little bit more secure than it is, right? <laughs> you know, I do have electricity and I have water and I have a, a rinky, flimsy little thing, but it does the job. I have these two newer video lights. I have one right here, and I have another one right here, okay? And they have a very specific purpose. Their job is to show up close products that I'm holding toward the camera. So for example, if I'm sitting right here, I'm well lit, okay? But if I reach toward the camera holding a product, it, it, it's difficult to see it. It's dark. You can't see it very well. So what I do is I simply turn on these lights. So now I can adjust this barn door 
and if I'm holding up, say, a lens and I go, well, take a look at this. This is the seven artisans, blah, 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 blah. This light shines right here and it's easier to see the lens. You see that right there? Particularly when you have a black lens in the dark area right here. And lastly, I mentioned before, I have these little remote control things. These were lawn and outdoor lights. Well, I have them hooked up back here. So all I have to do is go one, two, and three. And this turns on all of the background. I also have this set up to a Chromecast. So I have a photo album in Google Photos. And what I do is almost every video that I work on involves taking test shots or I'm on location and I try and incorporate the pictures from the video I'm working on so that you see them in the, like this one right here. This is the one on my F-Log video. So you see it in the background while I'm talking in the F-Log video, you see the picture of the shoot of the F-Log video. I try and tie it together. As I'm sitting right here, boom, I've got a color checker. I can hold this up to my face before I start shooting and I do that before every shot. I hold it up here, it takes a reading there. I flip it, boom, the overhead gets a shot of it just like that and I find that I can then color balance easier by having this right here beside me. This is an Atom Mini right here, which I use as a switcher for live streams. This is wonderful. I can do a whole video on just what this is and how it works. I'm not gonna get into this right now, but that's what this is about. I have a feed right here. So this monitor will show me exactly what is going out live when I do the live stream. So I can keep my eye on that. I love having that there. So here I have a podcasting mic, which can come right down this way. And I could just have it like this and I can do a podcast if I need to, which is right on my desk, ready to go. And if I am doing a podcast, I can then flip this around. Let's say I'm testing something in a Mac and PC. I've got a Mac right here, but if I want to quickly record what it looks like on a PC to demo it, I can have a PC right here plugged into this, and then so I could demo here, demo here, and just get kind of a dual action operating system thing going on. It's very cool, and it saves me time. That's what this is about, how much time it can save. So whenever I show a camera screen, a Fujifilm camera screen of what the camera sees, or I'm demoing what you're seeing through the camera, I use this setup right here. This is the Atomos Ninja 5 monitor. I record the footage onto this hard drive. And what's great about this is it comes out of, or it comes into this monitor, this HDMI cable comes under here. And check this out. Look at this, I got right here, boom, I grab this cam demo. It's even labeled, you see that? It, it, and it goes right on here with these cord organizers. These are awesome, you just stick it right there. And it's always available. So I could come right over to the desk. Let's say I want to do a camera. Let's say I want to do a camera demo. I come right to the desk. I just grab the cord like this. Boom. Out it goes. And I plug the cord right into the camera just like this. And I can do my demo. When you see, you know, uh, the demo, that's what that is. And it's just, it saves time because it captures everything that this camera sees, including the screen and the menus. And it records it onto this Atomos Ninja 5, and I have the footage from that. So very handy. This is where I put my SD cards right here. I'm not gonna get into data management with this studio tour or post-production workflow. I definitely wanna make a video on that. I've got a lot to talk about with that. What I do is when I'm done shooting, out goes the hard drive, and then I have these right here, which I plug them in. Now I wanna show you something. You see how I have a dot right here. Would you plug it in that way or would you just go like that? So it's just those little things. And it's so much faster if you just know what orientation based on the dot. If you look right here, have a look at this. I have this X-T3 controller, except it's facing this way. I can't see the button at all. Right, I, I can't see it, but so and I keep it right here on my desk. And so when I sit down and I'm ready to shoot, I need to press that button to start this camera right here. So what I do, I used to be fumbling. I didn't know where the button was. Now I know it's right where that dot is and I just go boop and it starts the camera. That's what I'm talking about. 
You want to reduce the amount of thinking you have to do for little things. If you can just put a dot here or a mark there and just line it up, it's so much easier because the last thing you want to be thinking about is where the button is and all these. You want to be focused on the story you're going to tell and what you're going to review and how you're going to do the video. Under here, it's still really messy, but it's, it's getting better. What I have is I have a Mac Mini. This was the last Mac Mini that has four ports on it. The new Mac Mini, the M1, only has two ports. I don't know what they're smoking over at Apple, but I'd like some of it because two ports is not enough. You, it's not even close to enough. Even with all these hubs, what they don't tell you is if you only have two ports and you start going like, this hub right here, the more stuff you connect to it, the more things go wrong. Like every now and then a drive will disconnect, like this G drive right here that holds some of my pictures, or this preamp will disconnect, right? Which because I have the redundant audio, it doesn't matter. This thing can conk out and I'll still have audio recording on the Zoom F6 right here. So here I have a jellyfish aquarium, well, kind of a fake jellyfish aquarium. And I just, the only reason I have this is it just looks cool in the background, that's all. I use these things all the time. This is an inexpensive way to organize things and to keep things like cord. For example, watch this. Put that on the side of the desk, boom the audio in here actually isn't too bad. Ideally, it would be nice to have some sound dampening boards, but right now, it, it sounds fine. I don't need to do anything with it. It's, it's ugly, but it's functional. This one is lens caps, <laughs> okay? These are the caps, and this one is only the bottoms, <laughs> and, I, and I keep them separate. And let me tell you that, that extra second I save by not going, um, is it in here? Oh, damn it. I know that if it's, if it's, for example, if I'm, if I'm needing just the bottom, then I can just go to the bottom. I, you know, does that make sense? <laughs> this is not just a studio. This is my happy place. So I tend to put things in here to remind me of either past videos or really wonderful memories. They're kind of like little Easter eggs hidden in here. Let me show you one of them. This is one of the first photographs I ever took. This is, for those of you who live in Los Angeles, this is Sunset Boulevard at about three o'clock in the morning. I was in high school. I put a tripod right just kind of by the side of the road. So I opened up the shutter on the camera and then I ran like crazy all the way here, got in the car, turned on my headlights and zigzagged along, there were no other cars, zigzagged along Sunset Boulevard till I got here, got out of the car, then turned off the camera. But why I'm so proud of this shot, first of all, it was one of my first ever photographs. Secondly, I processed the film and printed it in my own dark room, which I had converted my bathroom. So I remember the smell of fixer. <laughs> For those of you that have developed pictures, you should know what I'm talking about. All right, come over here. So here we have stuff from prior videos. You know, my shutter speed, ISO, aperture triangle. We have a Fast Friday. I have just little bits from other videos. Some of you may remember your life, uh, shutter 101, little kind of interesting things. I keep all my lenses here. This is everything and I use them. So if I need a lens, you know, I pick it up and I go out on a shoot, back it goes right here. Okay, so another thing I get a lot of questions on is this right here. This is not a lens, nor it is a piece of photography or videography gear. This is an E11 blaster from Star Wars. It's made out of like rubber, right? It, the stormtroopers had them, you know, when they were running through the Death Star with it. So this stand actually lights up underneath there. It's got different colors and I keep it right there. And that was a gift from my wife, so I'm a lucky guy. I've shown you a lot today, but I actually want to leave you with two really important thoughts. The first is that a lot of the equipment and gear and things that you saw in this video were the accumulation of years of putting together. They didn't just happen overnight. And also with that, keep in mind that it's never about the, it's never about the gear, never about the gear. The gear certainly can be important, but it's how you use the gear that matters. And the second thought I wanna leave you with is very, very simple. Done is better than perfect. 
I can't emphasize that enough. This studio is not done, not by a long shot. <laughs> there are all kinds of improvements that need to be made, but I didn't want to wait for them to get started. Heck, I didn't even want to wait for a ceiling and for the walls to be completed until I got started. So I just started. I got started. Done is better than perfect. The B plus job finished is better than the A job incomplete. Well, I hope you enjoyed the video, and if you did, be sure to give it the like and subscribe. I got so many requests for a studio tour. I did not want to do one, and I put off doing one for a long time, but I delivered, you got the tour, and I hope you enjoyed it. In the meantime, I'll see you in another video again real soon. Take care.